Hello and welcome to Arts 102, Design and Communication. I'm your instructor, Thorin Teague. Um, pretty much everybody calls me Thor. And uh, you can email me at the address listed here. If you have any questions throughout the course, um, you can also contact me at the number shown here. Uh, you don't have to worry about frantically capturing all this information right this second because it's also in the syllabus. So. Um, and if you do have any questions that are sort of generic or kind of concern everybody, um, you know, like questions about the assignment, things that other students might also want to know, um, give that a little thought before you email me. And if you think maybe it's the other students will want to know the answer to your question, uh, post that in the question and answer forum for the course if you don't mind. Uh, sometimes I also might take an, uh, take an email that I get from a student and move it to the question and answer forum. I'll leave it anonymous. So, um, and you can post anonymously in that forum. So, let's just take a look here. Arts 102 is all about design and communication. And we're going to learn all kinds of stuff about the process of creating visual art and visual communication, as well as the communication process in general. Um, and basically, we're going to learn how to brainstorm an idea and flesh it out uh, and make that into a final piece uh, as as we work through this process. The idea that I want you to learn about is how does your thought become a work of art? That's our goal this semester and I want to teach you how that's going to happen. Okay, so let's just talk about what this class is about. The, um, it's the foundation of all the communication, media, and arts department curricula, as well as uh, it fulfills the communication requirement from other curricula. So this is the only arts class that I teach or any other art teacher teaches that has non-majors in it. Um, this is not a Photoshop class, and when I say that, um, what I mean by that is that it's First and foremost, it is a concepts class. It's conceptual. Um, it is not about Photoshop skills, and it is not about being a Photoshop ninja. It's not about knowing every button to push that's in Photoshop. Um, we do use Photoshop for our work in this class, um, primarily. I've had students, if you need a free solution, I've had students use GIMP as well. My demos will be in Photoshop. You'll, you're going to have to figure that out on your own if you're going to use GIMP. But uh, I've had students successfully use GIMP. It's fine. Um, but anyway, the point is this class is about concepts. It's not about the, the technicalities of Photoshop itself. Um, that isn't to say that you're not going to learn about Photoshop because you are you will learn uh, quite a bit about Photoshop. I'm going to get you started uh, with a foundation of how to use and navigate the, the software. It's very meaty, um, very, very thick piece of software. And once you kind of have a working knowledge of how to navigate the interface and how to do all the basic functions, you can take it from there and we'll open the class up and um, you can kind of find your own particular little niche to explore. Um, it's a communication class. You're going to be presenting your work to the class in discussion forums and these discussions about your work is uh, and most likely it's going to come in the form of a discussion post. If you're familiar with forums you just they're, they're like um, chat room they're sort of like chat rooms and email um, but everybody can see the posts so you're going to post your picture and, and talk about your picture quite a bit in this class. Um, you are also very welcome to record, uh, if you so desire, a, a screencast of yourself and give an actual presentation if you wish, and that would be great to see. Uh, this is a class that builds with e each module, which means um, when we learn a concept in this class, it applies from that point forward. It's not the type of thing where you learn unit one and then you take a quiz and then you just throw all that stuff away. It's going to be you learn unit one, um, you maybe take a quiz on, on uh, that unit or a couple of units at a time and then that applies from that point forward. So you learn about balance 
in in one of our units and then um, you're going to make your your project that talks about balance uh, and then you're going to moving forward you're going to still apply the balance concepts to each subsequent piece so it builds with each module that's what I mean by that uh, this is more about the creative process it's more about just exploring um, learning about the concepts like I said it's a conceptual class the design process and it's learning about communication and vocabulary this at this stage this class is a lot of vocabulary and it is fun I think I hope everybody else finds it fun as well desire to learn obviously you already know a little bit about um, we're an online course you must have already figured out how to get there and get to this video so you're doing good um, we're gonna have all our content on desire to learn uh, the discussion forums that I mentioned before uh, where you're going to talk about your projects and um, post about uh, the first thing we're going to post is a little intro to yourself and if you end up doing any artist dates you're going to post those in the forum there's going to be a calendar of lectures and deadlines uh, in, D in D2L <clears throat> and your grades of course everybody wants to keep up on their grades and I want you to keep up on your grades so uh, let's just take a moment real quick to just peek at D2L. I've got it open in the other window here and um, this is what you're going to be looking at more or less. Uh, we've got a couple of tabs up here. The one that's a really big deal is right here. The content tab is where most of our stuff kinda is. You will also find um, there's sort of a quickie content browser. This is just there as a convenience. Here's that calendar I mentioned and this is again there's your grades um, looking at the content section you would have already found this to have found this video but you'll see basically this um, these units are going to be locked so you won't see them yet until uh, until we're working on those but those are upcoming and uh, this is your first day handouts and this is your optional content and here's the first unit that we're going to be working on this is the communication unit so in each of these sections of content you will find typically something along these lines you might find assignments you might find lecture notes you might find ebooks web resources um, not every one of these is in every section but um, that's sort of the typical structure um, in the optional content there's also uh, a link well sorry several links to online museums um, and if this looks a little bit different um, it should still be structured basically the same way it could evolve a little bit from the time that I recorded this video until the time that we're taking the actual class but that's the basic <coughs> um, structure on how all these units are are how you're going to navigate all these units so with these ebooks that you're going to see periodically you might see a printable version and you might see one that's just straight so you see a communication and then you see a communication printable that is you don't have to read both they're both the same thing you just pick one or the other and the uh, printable version is basically they removed the example images for copyright so you could print it um, the non-printable version has the copyright so I'm sorry the images so um, either one you want to do doesn't really matter they both basically say the same things so that's approximately how D2L works and like I said you probably have already figured it out um, the assessments tab here has discussions drop boxes and quizzes you don't really need to use this because I'm gonna have the drop boxes the discussions and the quizzes I'm going to have those linked for your convenience in each of the sections here of content so they'll be right here anyway and then if you do need to email me you can get right into this communication tab and there's your email option so that's pretty much how this is structured it's not too tough to figure out so presumably like I said you've already gotten there so presumably you're ahead of the game um, these are the expectations that are on the student in 
this class and probably any class. This is um, just something that I'm obligated to go through with you so that you know up front how how this works and um, it's nothing to get uh, you know, too worried about. It's not um, typically a big problem but um, they uh, the the management likes me to go through this with with students so I just want to go through it so you know what's going on. Um, we're expecting that you can use Desire to Learn and Internet Web Searches. You want to get in touch with LCC Tutor or the Help Desk as soon as possible if you're expecting you might have a problem navigating D2L or the Internet, um, downloading and uploading as well. And um, if, if any of those things are intimidating for you, then um, definitely get in touch with somebody to get a rundown of how to do that. Like I said, I'm sort of assuming that um, as an online student you're um, you're savvy with these sort of things. So <clears throat> if not, get in touch with somebody. You are not expected to create masterpieces in this class. So I find a lot of students get kind of anxious about the level of um, artistry that they're capable of, the level of aesthetics that they're capable of. I don't expect masterpieces. I'm not worried about that. Um, you want to just try to communicate clearly. That's all we're trying to accomplish. You want to avoid distractions and decorations and just really get your point across, learn a little bit about how visuals work and so on. Try to make it reasonably aesthetically pleasing. Um, you're not being graded on drawing ability at all if if your work even involves any drawing. It might, it might not. That's kind of optional. Um, there is a time commitment with this being a summer class. You got to keep in mind that we have eight weeks instead of 16. So there is a significant time commitment. That number that I threw out there is um, it, it's just for the sake of throwing something out there. It's nothing to get too excited about. But I figure probably eight to 12, 15 hours on a 16 week class online uh, is about the commitment. So presumably we're going to double that. We're doing double time. So 20 to 25 hours, that is going to vary from one student to another. Um, some people are going to whiz right through this like ninjas and other people will need to spend a little more time on certain uh, pieces and certain um, concepts. But, you know, I think by and large 20 to 25 hours is what you should expect. And, you know, if I'm highballing it, then all the better for you. Uh, and that's definitely a commitment, but hopefully you're committed. So <laughs> the uh, responsibility is on you for the content. You need to make sure that you follow the lectures, you've read all the instructions, you've read any of the electronic texts, and you have the textbook and are reading it. And uh, yes, there will be a test. The uh, <clears throat> instructions, let me talk about the instructions a little bit. I found that um, in my classes I've found that I've had to take away more points for failing to follow the instructions than any lack of talent or ability. I would read the instruction, read the assignment instructions twice if you have to and just make sure you understand everything. Read it start to finish before you begin any execution. Just make sure you've got it all down pat. Late assignments, I'll take assignments late um, within one week past the due date. And you want to make sure you let me know by email when you're submitting stuff late. Be prepared to present your projects and discuss your creative process. This will, like I said, this will occur on the forums, um, but you're welcome to do a screencast if you would like. That would be wonderful to see. And I want you to try to apply that vocabulary that we're that we're going to learn in this class while you're speaking about your projects. So how does um, how do the unity concepts apply to your project? How do the balance concepts apply to your project? That's what I'm interested in hearing about. So <clears throat> the data management, the onus is on you. This is an online class, so you have to be able to manage your data and um, the the deadlines are strict because in the studio the deadline is strict so I am pr trying to prepare students for 
um, what it's like to work in the studio. I've been there, and I know what is expected of people. I've um, I've got uh, f- almost a decade of field experience, uh, and I normally I would have mentioned this at the beginning, but it slipped my mind. I've got about a decade of experience almost in, in uh, production, and I've been working with Photoshop for actually going on 20 years now. Um, almost, almost as old as the, I think the program started in 93 or 94. I started using it in like 96 or seven, somewhere around there. Um, and the, uh, the, if your digital dog ate your digital homework, that's something that is really, it's, it's 2014, at least at the time of this recording. And that's not really an excuse anymore. So what I want to do is just take a moment to show you um, a couple alternatives while we're talking about this. Keep a, keeping a backup copy of your work. And uh, we all have probably flash drives, and those are fine. Um, just make another copy on your flash drive after you're done with all your projects. That, that works great, but you actually may not be aware that you also have a cloud drive and let me show you where it is um, if i go to on the lcc portal i'll go to the home and i'm going to go to my student email right over here and i'm going to load my student email and right up here we're going to see this little s- grid of squares if you click on that, those are the apps. These are Google Apps. And this one right here, this thing called Drive, is your cloud drive. And this can be used as your backup. You can upload your files or a whole folder at a time if you would like or whatever. So you definitely have a lot of options. And this is impossible to lose absolutely impossible that you will lose these files once they're uploaded and as long as you know your password to this site um, which you obviously do because here you are so there is basically um, for better or worse there's basically no excuse left in this day and age Submit your work on the Dropboxes, your Arts 102 assignments. Um, You're going to present and discuss your assignments on the forums. And you can attach an image of your work in there. If you need help doing that, if uh, um, you have any trouble with it, just let me know and we'll work that out. It's not a a real tough thing, but just look for the Attach File button and that will be wonderful. Um, Lectures or presentations or keynotes, whatever you want to call them. They are going to be accompanying each unit and you're going to be responsible for the lecture content and the ebook content, or I should say the book content, either way. Um, some le- units have ebooks, some don't. In each presentation, if I'm giving a keynote, some slides will have this note icon. That note icon means I strongly recommend taking notes on that slide. Not this one. But this is kind of, you know, read this as, hey, this is possibly or maybe even probably going to show up on a test somewhere. So you might want to jot it down. I'm not out to trick anybody. Slides without this icon are generally expounding on the core idea. Just background info or more examples or whatever. Expectations are a two-way street, of course. Um, You can share any kind of expectations, concerns, um, criticisms, uh, questions, whatever, in your uh, first forum post when you're introducing yourself. Please feel free. Uh, Another thing that I have to talk about, this is just obligatory. It's nothing, again, to get too worried about. This is not something that I run into very often, but it is very important that you understand copyright and how this works. It's basically um, absolutely pivotal, uh, very, very important that you understand this in art. Uh, If you're not understanding 
what is and is not fair use intentionally or not that part's bold and underlined intentionally or not can cost a creative company or individual millions of dollars this ruins people that's why it's our goal to correct unfair use and plagiarism right away so let's just take a look at a real simple spectrum of fair use we've got um, an always okay side and a never okay side and then we've got a gray area so it's always okay to draw or shoot your imagery yourself and in terms of copyright it's always okay to utilize material in the public domain or royalty material uh, royalty free material that you have paid for um, that's in terms that's in terms of legally speaking that's not in terms of this class per se my strong preference is that everyone is making their own original imagery now there's certain examples there's certain scenarios that sort of prevent that like if you are on the subject of the Civil War for example it might not be very easy for you to take a camera out and get any kinds of authentic shots of Civil War um, action or Civil War even um, even objects and artifacts that that might not be too easy for you to do um, so there's probably tons of that kind of stuff in the public domain and um, if that's something that you need then then that's one thing on the other hand if you're getting a, a royalty free image of a leaf or a brick texture or a grass texture or something like that a sky a sunset it's like you really could shoot that yourself and and just make it your own on the never okay side of things it is never okay to take someone else's image or written work and turn it in as is with your name on it so kind of a no-brainer the gray area is not a no-brainer it gets a little weird and you're welcome to play in this area you know we're just speaking in terms of copyright law um, it is a little weird uh, more towards the okay side of the spectrum is parody of existing copyrighted material this is supposed to be okay according to copyright some companies are more draconian about enforcing their copyright <coughs> Disney <coughs> and they don't like parody quite as much as others do um, even uh, Weird Al is actually into clearing all of his parodies even though he doesn't have to he would rather just do it so um, collage uh, you know if, if the copyrighted material is sliced and diced so much that you can't identify every element you're probably okay probably about smack in the middle is repurposing retooling sampling existing copyrighted material um, it, music comes to mind when I'm talking about this there's been lots of sampling of uh, copyrighted music that's been going on um, in electronic and hip-hop music since you know 20 plus years ago now um, actually no more than that that's we're more like 30 plus years at this point and it's an accepted technique now to a point but they like you to clear it but there's still uh, you know and I always bring up the example of girl talk if you look up girl talk he he is just a guy who remixes and mashes up copyrighted music and he's he's got nothing original in any song but it's sliced and diced to the point that um, you know the individual pieces are still recognizable but it's it's basically a new thing and my understanding from an NPR interview that I heard uh, a couple years ago from him is that he doesn't clear any of it and he's never been approached uh, that was true a couple of years ago I don't know if that's still true but uh, moving towards the not okay side of things publishing a photograph with the identifiable face of a subject who hasn't consented to being photographed might not be a good idea as well as including copyrighted artwork in a photograph you want to be careful about that stuff try to avoid it if you can this uh, again I'm obligated to just say this up front just so that it's so that you're aware plagiarized assignments will be scored as a zero um, and there's no chance to make up the assignment whether it was intentional or not um, in some cases particularly multiple offenses it may be reported to BIT scavenging images like I said the the point of this class is to 
start learning how to create your own original imagery. I've seen a lot of stuff. I've been doing this a while. Um, it's uh, probably something I've seen before. Um, I might n not know, but I probably will know. And I can, and if I suspect, I know how to figure it out pretty quick. Uh, including public domain and royalty-free image imagery that you've paid for. Um, not strictly forbidden, but like I said, if you don't have a compelling reason, if you don't really need it, um, try to avoid it. It's kind of lame. If you choose to use such sources, either have a really good reason or make sure you really make it your own by, you know, altering it or repurposing it, slice and dice it, or, you know, blend it in in some way. Always, always safe. If you're ever in doubt, just draw it or shoot it yourself. Never go wrong that way. Okay, thank you.